Hello guys, welcome to episode one of season two in the Road to Glory, the Youth RTG here at AFC Chesnoid. If you don't want to have the end of last season spoiled, go and watch the season finale that was out yesterday first and then come back and join me here. We have new kits for our new season. We have new scouts for our new season. We have new objectives both in-game and the fan objectives are now here as well. Plenty to get through in episode one of season two. We've narrowed down an area of what we want in the transfer window. Whether we can actually buy anyone or not remains to be seen. It depends what my scouts can find with regards regions. But certainly we want to sign some Youth Academy players. We've brought up some more Youth Academy players already in between seasons. And... We have to pray that in this big summer transfer window, we can hold on to our, bis, uh, our biggest and our best, in the same word apparently, players. Of course, we have some high-rated players in Morris at 70 rated. Ben Jack is continually growing at 66. Young Ruben Richardson at 68 is going to be attracting the eyes of some bigger clubs. We want success this season. We came, spoilers, Oh, so close to a playoff spot last year. After a slow start, we built up steam and had a fantastic second half of the season. We want to keep that going for the whole year this time around. This will be Jensen Glover's final year. He is retiring at the end of this season. So not only are we desperate for him to have another good season, we're also desperate to replace him and find someone to be the next saviour of this football club to hopefully get us promoted rather than just holding firm in this division. You can see the new home kit on the right-hand side there. I shall show you the away and third in due course. What our objectives are both in-game and yours as well, of course. We promised fan objectives and finally, they are here. Thank you for your patience in that regard. Uh, youth development-wise, by calling up some of my youth players that I already had carried over from Season 1, we've already ticked one there. And we should, I'm sure, be able to sign three players to a defensive position throughout the course of the remainder of this season. Sign one player in North America. That's, or born in North America. That's not going to happen yet because we're only focusing on domestic talent at this stage. However, if I need to save my job, you could be damn sure I'm going to try and tick that. Financially, hmm, sign a crucial player, make a profit of £8.6 million. Tell me the last time you saw a League Two club make a profit of £8.6 million. Hmm. Domestic success. Now, here is where the challenge is this year. The board saw us make a playoff push last season. This year, they've gone bollocks to the playoffs. Bollocks to even second or third. Win the league. I'll try. A round of 16 again in the FA Cup as well. And continentally, obviously, nothing yet. Now, for the first time in any save ever, we have, bing, fan objectives. Coming from the comment section and coming from YouTube as well. Six fan objectives. I don't have punishments for them. It's been really difficult to try and nail down a punishment that feels he wants to encourage you to do the challenge, but at the same time doesn't really drastically just destroy your squad if you don't get it. So uh, we're going to not do punishments, but I am going to try and get as many of these fan objectives throughout the course of the season as I can. Emmett said get 20 goal contributions with my scout future star. That, of course... Uh, hinges on Morris staying. Daniel Scott, five victories whilst keeping a clean sheet. That hopefully we can do this year. Zach says, uh, I've kind of tweaked Zach. He said, don't lose to your rival team. So what I've done is take at least two points, bearing in mind kind of a draw and a draw. Uh, obviously, if we get a win and loss, then we still lost, but we've also beaten them. So I guess it kind of narrows, it kind of evens itself out. Uh, Gigera said win the Papa John's Trophy this season. So we shall try and do that. We weren't planning on putting anything into the Papa John's Trophy, but it prioritizes a cup competition. And maybe we put more emphasis on that than we do the Carabao Cup this year rather than vice versa. Bossman Ben said get 30 gone contributions with my forward players. So striker, left wing, right wing, and Cam. And then John C, this is a good one for a youth RTG, said give debuts to eight new players this season. Now, we do have new players already in the starting lineup. So, let's show you who that is at this particular moment in time. There is only one. That being Boyle on the left-hand side. 
He comes in now to start at left back moving forward. Austin has moved to the right and Francis is now dropped entirely. We have more youth players to bring through. We're also looking to loan out a number more that we called up from last year. And fingers crossed, throughout the course of the season, we will be able to offer debuts to more than just Boyle before we are done. Now, it's time to A, go and play some football, and B, see what happens in the transfer window. My youth scouts are out looking. The way that I was trying to do it with the one star, one star, etc., it just wasn't working. So now, two star judgment, and we're basing it off the judgment for the quality of scout, because that's effectively judges the quality of the scout. The experience is just kind of how many players you get back. So two star judgment, lead two, three star judgment, lead one, four star judgment, Championship, five-star judgment, Premier League. And of course, our chief scout, which is now Austin Groves, has one star extra and is effectively of the league above. So we're looking for defensive-minded Northern Irishmen, Irish wingers, and English attackers. Guess where we're looking to sign players? At centre-back, which is where we're lacking, and at striker, where we're desperate to try and replace the now-retiring Jensen Glover. And I do need some wingers too. We're going to do it three months at a time, rather than just send them out for nine months, so we can kind of chop and change throughout the course of the season, as our priorities may shift. For now, please do continue to drop the videos a like. It very much helps the channel, helps the content, and I appreciate it very much indeed. If we could hit over 500 again, that'd be absolutely superb for the start of a new season. And of course, if you're not already, do subscribe to the channel. Speaking of subscribing to the channel, I'll mention this at the beginning of episode two as well, because I've obviously waffled on for a little bit now. Uh, on the second channel, guess what's just started? A brand new series on Chesnoid Plays. There's a link to it in the description down below. Saving Southampton. We are revisiting a fan favourite. So if you want to see that series, which will come to you daily on the second channel, then there is a link down below. Started yesterday as you see this, I believe. So episode one is already up. And of course, we're recording both that and this over on Twitch as well. If you want to come and join me live and see all of the behind the scenes. Right. Shut up, Chez. I'll play some FIFA. For the first time, we have a transfer dilemma. Richardson has had a bid from Cremonese of £2.4 million. Now, they were Serie A in Season 1. They have been relegated to Serie B, but we're still League 2. Had we made it to League 1 last year, I would have probably rejected this bid. However, along with what we said at the beginning of the save, to keep things as realistic as possible, and it is going to suck for some fan favorite players, of course, but that is the way of things and that further increases the challenge of a save like this. Ruben Richardson looks like he's going to be on his way. They've been 33, they've been a third more basically than his valuation. I am going to accept that bid. Ruben Richardson looks likely to leave and in his place coming up will be Marshall who has comparably isn't that far behind. Diving is only one less. Reflexes is two more. Speed is only one less. Kicking is irrelevant. It's only the handling that's significantly lower and the position is easily trainable. In fact, that's what we're training him for now. So Marshall is gonna go into the starting lineup for the foreseeable future. And that is the first big crunch of the giant challenge we're putting on ourselves for this save. That's what's going to make it even more difficult to progress through the divisions. But that is the point. He's my second highest rated player. A side that just got relegated from Serie A has come in for it. If it's like random Polish teams or a random Romanian team, then... Yeah, I'll turn them down. But a side that's just come down from Serie A, I think I have to accept that. Confirmed. Ruben Richardson sold to recently relegated, previously top flight Italian side, Cremonese. Now, please do give me your feedback in the comments section on that transfer. Because rather obviously, it's going to be controversial. I understand that engaging the response from this first instance will help us dictate the direction we go in moving forward. 
I'm of the opinion that I think that was the right thing to do. If they'd been a Serie B side last year and again this year, I might have rejected it. But the fact that they were Serie A last year and came down, I think that's the right thing to do for Ruben Richardson. Of course, as ever, we are absolutely open to signing players back again later down the line once we've progressed as a club are in a position to realistically buy those players back again. So we will keep an eye on Ruben Richardson. I will add him to my transfer hub along with, of course, those Patreon players uh, that are currently there. And we will see how he progresses over the course of the save. Leaves us at 68 rated. His value is still the same, actually, at £1.8 million. Pounds. We'll perhaps try and keep an eye on Cremonese throughout the course of the season as well. But I believe he goes in there as their starting goalkeeper. So he's got the number one. Ruben Richardson leaves us and will now start for them. After no luck in our youth scouts really at all, a potential for a position change for a couple of players, but unsure as to whether that's actually going to do anything in the short term. Kim McCloskey physically looks okay. Uh, but technically not great. Obviously, you can see the crossing and the curve are decent. He's definitely a mid, not a, a defender. And then there was Liam Humphrey, who again, physically okay. But technically, there's not really much there either. So they de they certainly need some work. We potentially have some players that have come through other clubs' youth academies that we're currently scouting that are based in domestic leagues which, of course, we are limiting ourselves to during our time in Leagues 1 and 2. So, we'll wait and see if potentially we might be able to put that Ruben Richardson money to good use in the not-too-distant future. First things first, though, it's off to... Well, my brain says the Reebok, but it's probably not called the Reebok anymore. Regardless, it's definitely in Bolton. And to show you all of our kits this year, home kit you've seen there, the away kit is red and white, and the alternate kit actually looks like it has some sort of blocked out sponsor which gives it more of a realistic football kit type look so i like that but for this one of course we'll be playing in the away kit away from home against bolton a shock inclusion this year of course having been relegated from league one last year bolton a side that in real life are actually challenging for promotion to the championship but they've come down their side is as you might well expect significantly one of the best in the league. Santos, their captain, is 70 rated at centre-back. And Fernandez in goal is 66 rated and one of the regens we were looking at. A potential Ruben Richardson replacement. Glover now has gloves on. The doctor will see you now wearing his blue gloves because his finishing is surgical. That was the reasoning behind it come up with from someone in the Twitch chat. Game one of season two against promotion rivals you have to say Bolton Wanderers There's John forward from right back all oh, that burst of acceleration was particularly nice Boyle however on debut puts in a good tackle first time jeez Louise Sheehan Ruben Richardson or no Ruben Richardson that's unsavable no clean sheet on debut for Marshall, but that's not really much of a surprise. With an effort like that, that's outrageous. Apparently, that's the sort of quality we're going to be facing from sides that were relegated last year. To Morris. Takes it in his stride nicely. Morris will look for Glover here. Glover will return it to him. We'll look for Glover again. Glover has support here from Evans, who's forward and draws the save out of Fernandez, the goalkeeper. Someone we might well be looking to sign sooner rather than later, perhaps, if possible. Glover's header! Well, he's certainly putting up a good display so far, Fernandez, isn't he? If we do want to buy him, certainly looks like he might be half decent. It's going to bounce and make it awkward, but Morris wins the header. Glover brings it down. Saved by Fernandez again. It's going to be tough to get it past him today. Oh, ref! That's... Dangerous from behind. He might be in trouble here. Referee comes across. Is he going to his back pocket? No, it's a top pocket. It's a yellow card only for Josh Sheehan. He is a lucky boy with that. Very lucky boy. That's two-footed and into the back of him. I'm sorry, that's a red card. Glover 
Looking to turn inside. Hold off the attentions of the defenders that are with him and squeeze it through the keeper's legs. He might be 34. He might be retiring at the end of the season. He's still reliable. Jensen Glover with the surgically accurate finish through the goalkeeper's legs. We are level in stoppage time at the end of the half. And obviously I was concerned and still really am quite concerned that we might not be able to rely on Jensen Glover all year long because he's definitely going to decline further as the year passes. But the fact that he's off the mark already this season and might even be in for two and is... Oh, Jensen Glover, we love you! He is a cult hero already. <laughs> Can you believe it? What a man. Morley and Sheehan. That's a lovely little flick. Oh, and they're in behind. Big save by Marshall. His high reflexes stat is going to make a big difference, I think. And hopefully will mean that we won't miss Richardson as much as perhaps we fear we might. I'm obviously basing all of this off save basing all of this off less than one game's experience so far but he's not done anything embarrassing yet has he I'm not sure i can let him go until i find someone else evans looking for the ball over the top to morris it bounces off him but it does reach him and the ball into the middle is good conic's header is on target but comfortable enough for the goalkeeper austin will work this back inside kennedy looking for the ball through stanley evans in the box Cut it back and Connick buries 3-1 AFC Chesnoid against one of the best teams in the league that have just come down from the league below. A statement of intent for us this season. This is huge. Make no mistake, getting this result like this is massive. Final whistle sounds. Well then, welcome to League 2, Bolton Wanderers. That's a huge result for us. A giant result. Is Kai Connick going to be the man to step up and replace Jensen Glover? He's just come off the bench and performed well, but we need more time. How's that after game one? Two goal contributions from our future star. Both assists for Morris. A debut for Patrick Boyle. And four goal contributions from our forward players. Everything came from Stanley Evans... Isaac Morris or, of course, Jensen Glover. Four contributions of the 30 we need for boss man Ben's objective as well. They won't all go that well, but it's a great place to start. Well, after one League One side in the first game, it's a League One side in the second, although this one is Carabao Cup. So we will be quick simming it with the rotated 11 to give them some first team football as well. Uh, we're out of the Carabao Cup. Oh no, big whoop, really sad, single tier. No, we're fine, we'll recover well from that. We've got, had a few youngsters go out on loan, which has been good. And hopefully they will continue to grow whilst on those loan spells. Up next for us then is Swindon Town. Another winnable game for sure. Swindon the side that we played on the final day last year and got a good win against. Unfortunately, the win wasn't good enough to get us into the playoffs but they are without a couple of their best players their goalkeeper is 56 rated dare i say it they might be vulnerable we'll try and work this and then maybe find glover in the middle with a cross kennedy will look to deliver it <laughs> shit in it uh thank you <laughs> what's he doing then i know he's 56 rated but that is a gift What's he doing there? I can't explain that to you. Oh my God. 1-0 um, to us. Kane back to him. Still back heel. Footwork from Kane. It's just gotten underneath the foot of the defender. Hutton again. Across here to Yandolo. Good save by Marshall. Wanted to go for me, Jensen. Jensen Glover's looking to get in behind. The defender's going to come across here. Jensen's going to beat him. And... Surgical clinical finishing again. Yeah, there's that white name and number. I asked it to be black and it didn't do it for me. FIFA. Austin. 
on the overlap. No, we'll back heel in there to Kennedy. And I'm going to try and get this to Vaughan if I can, which we've done nicely. Oh, my God. Cutting them apart at will and nearly a third goal. That's unbelievable football from this AFC Chesnoid side today. Oh, 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 he still needs to improve his shooting. It's still in the 40s. Can you tell? Morris, Glover's off. Jensen Glover is still a monster. Ha! Monster's got a wonky eye. Evans is probably the best free kick taker we have on the pitch at the minute. And whilst I'm not going to get much power on this, we'll still try and do something from the free kick. It's low, it's on target, needed saving, but save it he did. But we'll turn and look for Kai. Iconic, who's left-footed. That was weird. I'll take a free kick there if you don't mind, ref. I don't even know what happened there. It's kind of caught him from behind and he stumbled. That was really weird. Castro's the man on the free kick this time. Certainly we'll give it to Evans again. But we'll put a bit more height on it. And a bit more power from this close range, hopefully. That'll go in. The first free kick we've scored in this save so far. Buried by Mr. Evans. Stanley makes it 3-0. And we're taking three points. I think that deserves a replay, don't you? A hypermotion replay. You love to see it. That was a brilliant free kick. Considering stats are so low, that's a wonder goal. That was a strong challenge. And it's a straight red card. He's off. Cheerio, cheerio, cheerio. Lucas Ness has gone back to the lock early. Through the back of my guy. Certainly a deserved red card. Five fouls for them. We've been good little boys. Not making a single one. Scoring a number of goals as well. This has been a particularly impressive performance. Not too dissimilar, to be honest, to last year though, to be fair. So not a massive shock this one. The result against Bolton was the big shock. But to have come into this one and still been able to repeat what we did last year and slightly improve on it was 2-0 I think at the end of last year, wasn't it? And this is going to be three goals to nil. Two wins to start off the League 2 season. Certainly puts our promotion hopes into a good position. Feeling like we might just have a chance, you know. I'm actually going to simulate this one against Tranmere away from home. I wasn't planning on doing that today, but it makes tomorrow, episode two, a bit more straightforward. So Tranmere is certainly a side we should beat. So fingers crossed, this one hopefully will give us three wins from three so far this year in League Two. This feels a little bit frantic, this game so far. Glover's in behind here, but we're not going to get anything from the first half. It has been, as you can see, they're all Tranmere. I do need to sort my squad numbers out, so I'll do that after I've played this game and before I record episode two, so don't worry about that. Uh, Tramir are actually undefeated so far this season as well. They have four points heading into this one, so 1-1, one, one, drawn one, whereas we, of course, have our two back-to-back -back victories. We shall hopefully in this second half have a shot, let alone try and make it three wins in a row. It's nicely done. Oh, it's a good goal. They had a man free at the back post, and Hawks makes it 1-0 to Tranmere. Especially if we can't shoot, at the very least. Still without a shot in this game. Now, not only have we had a shot, we scored a goal. Kai Kodik equalises straight away. One shot, one goal. That'll do. How's that for a conversion rate? We'll take the point. Kodik has come off the bench and made an impact here, for sure. He had the header from the corner of it. We only got because he had the shot as well. Four shots in the end for us. Very even on paper. Certainly heading into the game or heading into the final half an hour. We certainly were on the back foot and weren't the best uh, of players there. Uh, right. Newport going to sign uh, Gavin Young on loan for you. That's fine. Now, scout reports back on Mateo Fernandez. He's 66 rated, 76 reflexes. At the minute, I have to be honest, I haven't been too disappointed in... Uh, the guy that's come in to replace Ruben Richardson and Pedro Carrillo. Doesn't look bad, you know. 65 rated CDM at Leighton Orient. We'll add those guys to our shortlist and maybe we might be able to have a think about signing them. I don't know as I'm actually going to get the opportunity to do so in this window. Because they've just come through their uh, 
I just come through their youth system, so I believe... Oh, no, okay, I could go for Mateo Fernandez. Peters was unwilling to relocate, so that was what gave me the impression that maybe he's just come through and it's saying he just doesn't want to move. But actually, I might be able to sign some players in this window. Carrillo. He's too important for Leighton Orient, so I can't sign Carrillo. I'm scouting a handful of others as well. They're not quite on my shortlist at the minute. But Mateo Fernandez. I could get him for 1.7-ish. So we could replace Ruben Rodriguez with Fernandez, potentially. He's significantly better on paper than Marshall. But I have to be honest, Marshall's been good so far. Let's not... I'm, I'm leaning towards not jumping the gun. Maybe we sign the other guy and send Marshall out on loan, but at the minute, I can't fault Marshall. He's not made any fault, any mistakes whatsoever. So, at the minute, I'm happy with where we are. Tomorrow, we will end the transfer window and hopefully get ourselves more points in the league and progression in the cup as well. In the league, we sit third behind... Cambridge United up the Yellows and Port Vale. But certainly a strong start to the season. Hopefully more of the same to come. Thank you very much for watching episode one. Please leave your feedback in the comment section about everything that we covered today. Drop the Oh, God, I punched my PlayStation 5. Drop the video a like if you've enjoyed, of course. I'd very much appreciate that. And I will see you tomorrow for episode two. Turn on alerts and you won't miss it. I'll see you then.